So this video is a continuation from the previous. Um, so you might ask what goes on in design school. And you're going to hear the term studio used because we work differently than other fields that use lecture halls or laboratories. We work in studios and studios are um, places, literally places for work. Um, over the years, this has changed. Um, initially, it used to be that you um, worked in person in a building that had tables set up like the image here and that everyone was assigned a space and was required to show up. And then something happened in 2007, the stock market crashed and people began to work differently. And ever since then, the studio concept has changed to become more universal. And this program um, typifies that. You will still work in a studio, but you will work in a studio of your own choosing. I believe that empowering you all to select the space that works best for you to work in, um, especially when you're a student, will contribute greatly to uh, your studies. This information is all new. Everything's brand new to you. Everything is being, you're being bombarded with a lot of new information at once. It's really, really important that you all decide what your studio should be and where your studio should be and when your studio should be you should pick the best learning environment for you. You are all adults. You um, have, you know yourselves better than anybody. And I can tell you as somebody who had a, had a studio, dedicated studio space in the middle of the studio, I didn't get a whole lot done in that room. I used to have to come in at two o'clock in the morning when there were fewer people there and quiet people there. And um, you know, that, that was fine with me. I, I like to be awake, but if I had to be somewhere at eight o'clock in the morning, it wasn't always convenient. So the industry now is moving to where people are choosing their own work environments. Fewer people are working in a collaborative space. People still do. And again, it goes back to what, you know, we talked about earlier. If you want to work in that environment, those, they're out there. There are still extroverts who need to work in collective studios. There are still firms who believe it's important that everybody work together as a team. And I'm not judging any of it. It's, it is what it is, and you have to find the, what works best for you. Um, so what happens now, right? So what goes on in design school? So what happens now is we, we're now in an environment where we can work globally. We can work internationally. We don't have to just limit who we work with to the people within our vicinity. And there are pros and cons to both sides of this. But the reality is that we um, are living in a different world and the pandemic has changed that drastically. And where we move forward um, is, is going to be contingent upon how things work well or they don't work. And so we're doing some experimenting right now and it's been kind of interesting. But since 2007, this industry has moved further away from the, the traditional studio model and has moved more into a empowered studio model where you pick your, your environment. So one thing that does happen is you um, learn through analysis of problems and develop possible solutions using composition models, images, and space. You'll use materials and processes from basic hand skills to computer skills um, to create visual forms of communication. That is, that is our media. That is the media that we work in. We are under the new media umbrella. Our media is, um, has moved away from being completely done by hand to now being um, done on computers in also mixed media. And I will tell you that every instructor has different expectations and different philosophy, though we do share a collaborative sense of what the industry is about. And we will all attempt to communicate that with you as, we, um, as you take our courses. So another difference between your general education courses and design is that our, our industry is primarily project-based rather than subject-based. 
Um, you're going to have assignments that are parts of a project. Um, and eventually you're going to work your way up to doing full projects. And that is just simply because that's how we work and you learn by doing. And as you start out, your projects will be more simple and broad, but as you move further through the program, they're going to become more complex. And that is because you will be building on your experience, so you'll be able to add more parts and pieces. From the college's perspective, design education is very expensive um, because it requires that faculty spend time with students individually. Um, and that may be in person or that may be online, but you still get a lot more individualized attention. And so what ends up happening is classes are smaller and you have more faculty. It is impossible to be anonymous in a design program because we will see your work, we will talk to you about your work, and we will build a relationship. And that is different than when you sit in a lecture hall and I have sat in a lecture hall full of 200 chemistry students and professor never knew who I was. That is not the case in design education. You will have interaction and you will build relationships with faculty. Um, another aspect is the group critique. We will be doing those. Um, we will be doing those virtually. Um, you will have the opportunity to give and receive feedback. It is very important that you learn how to do this. I Trust me, guys, I get it. I know it's uncomfortable. Um, and I'm going to teach you how to do it in a way that is 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 empathetic to others. You're not always going to get someone giving you empathetic feedback. I'm just gonna prepare you for that now. You are going to get feedback that's going to hurt your feelings at some point. Not everyone is sensitive, especially when they are paying the bill. Um, there are clients who are going to say just out, out, I, I don't like it, I hate it. <clears throat> and you have to always remember, it's not about you. It's always about the work and about the design. And while they may not have the, the, the skills they needed, they need to communicate appropriately. I'm gonna teach you the skills you need to communicate appropriately so that you always remain professional. Um, just one of the negatives of our industry is that you know sometimes you have to deal with someone's tantrum. And so I'm gonna teach you how to effectively deal with that without taking it personally um, and to get through it. Because at the end of the day, most of the time, the feedback you're going to get from clients is going to be positive and you're going to um, have a very rewarding sense of working with your clients very much in the same way that you're going to be working with faculty. So the critique is going to help you deal with criticism while it trains you um, how to verbally explain the reason behind your solutions. You are selling your design to everyone. The only sales that we the only sales pitch that we do is when we sell our work. We have to explain why we did what we did. And we're, you're going to get the opportunity to do that. And you want to learn how to do that now as a student. Because if you try to go out in the industry and learn how to do that, um, it's not going to be as, as positive of, a, of a, an experience. This learning environment is where you want to hone that. Um, you also have to learn to go beyond I like it or I don't like it, I hate it, right? Because that is not criticism. That is not, well, it's criticism. It's not constructive criticism. It's subjective. Your criticism should always be objective and it should always be about how to make yourself and your teammates work better, stronger. How to point out politely the gaps in the design that need to be fixed or filled. And that will save you change orders later on because change orders are expensive. Uh-oh, I don't know what happened to the slide, but um, let's see if it'll let me fix it. Yep, here we go. Well, I can move this over. There we go. <laughs> Fixed. Um, critiques will help you to understand what is expected, which we call the standards of excellence. It'll teach you to develop a vocabulary for discussion, how to use or reject um, suggestions from others. And as I have pointed out before, I had a meeting where I presented an idea and it just got shredded. And um, I was like, ouch. <laughs> but then I, I realized that what was said was valuable. It just, even if it wasn't said in a way that maybe it could have been. Um, 
And I used that to come up with a different idea. And my second idea was, was actually great. And everybody loved it. And then I, then I got the, the positive feedback, right? Oh, this is great. This is great. I want to be a part of this. I want to do this. I want to help. Um, and so that's the purpose here is to give you feedback so that you can come up with better ideas or strengthen, you know, what you already have. Okay, and so we all have personality and our personality is gonna come through and how we present things and you're gonna do some things and try some things and experiment as a student so that by the time you graduate and get out, you've developed your own style. And so we also are going to spend time on your path to finding a satisfactory solution so that you know this isn't, while it is a design industry, you will still find satisfaction in what you're doing and creating because it will still be your work. Okay, and so to conclude everything, um, as a project-oriented, highly interactive process, design interaction, education, excuse me, fosters dialogue, resourcefulness, and a constructive direction for you as a creative student. And the goal is exactly that. We are creative, we're looking for solutions, and we're learning the process so that when you finish, when you get to the end, um, and I believe you have 16 courses, uh, 15 courses after this one, let's put it that way, 15 courses after this one, um, or including this one, 16, that you have to complete 11 in your major. So when you get to the end of that, the goal is for you to be able to go out into the workforce and be ready to go. And this varies greatly from a four-year and a five-year program in architecture that is much more theoretical based. Um, we are much more ba are focused on um, you being able to get out and go to work. You can continue. You can go into a four or five-year program. Georgia Tech has a four-year program plus a master's in architecture. Um, uh, Kennesaw State has a five-year Bachelor of Architecture program, and I think they're working on a master's or they have just adopted a master's. So you can continue if you want to go on and do more, and it's much more based on design theory um, and creativity, whereas this, this degree is focused on not just the creative side, but also the technical side and what you will be able to do to be able to get a job after two years. So I'm gonna end this lecture series here. Um, we will continue in the next one. And by all means, please, please, please let me know if you had any questions.